The age of the smartwatch has arrived. If you don't believe it, turn on your TV to see Samsung's near constant barrage of nostalgic ads pushing its new Galaxy Gear. We've been using the Gear for about a week, and we found a lot to like about Samsung's take on the future of wearable computing. This is Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and here's five awesome things about the Samsung Galaxy Gear. The list of things Samsung gets right with the gear starts with the unboxing. The packaging is finished in the now familiar faux wood grain, but the cube shape evokes the sense of an expensive wristwatch, which of course the gear is, and the good first impression continues as you dive deeper into the box. The presentation of the watch front and center is excellent, with the tightly packed accessories flanking it. Speaking of those accessories, Samsung seems to be fully aware that its weird charging cable is, well, weird. But rather than hide from it, the company's embraced it, highlighting the cradle with the same stitched leather analog as found on the new Galaxy Notes. Whether this presentation suits your particular taste depends on you, but the company has definitely made an effort to make you feel like you're getting your $300 worth. That goes for the Gear's build quality as well. Samsung isn't necessarily known for pushing out premium-feeling hardware, but if it keeps building devices like this, that reputation is going to start turning around pretty quickly. The gear might be a little on the large side, but its steel and sapphire construction makes a great impression right off the bat. The main body of the watch feels solid and reliable, as does the latch mechanism containing the speakerphone. The adjustable band retains its soft curve, whether it's being worn or not, and the watch feels great on the wrist. Our black and silver model here is a watch that doesn't scream out for attention, but once people do notice it, it definitely makes an impression. And usually it's a good one. An impression that persists with the Gear's software. You can get a lot wrong trying to run Android on the small form factor of a wristwatch, of course, but Samsung has come out on top here with an interface that's clean, responsive, and generally intuitive. Using the top-down swipe as a persistent back gesture is very easy to pick up, and the Gear's single button can be programmed to launch custom apps with a double click. The two-finger tap for status indicators and two-finger tap and hold for multitasking might not be intuitive at first, but these gestures are handy once you get used to them. And the shortcuts on the watch face for quick access to the dialer and the camera are real time savers if you want to avoid that app ribbon. Speaking of which, there's a dialer and a camera here. Now look, taking phone calls on your wrist might get you the atomic wedgie treatment if you let the cretins on the playground catch you doing it, but if you watched any of the classic shows Samsung calls out in its gear commercials as a kid, doing the old Dick Tracy is bound to put a smile on your face. What's more, it doesn't actually sound half bad, especially on the other end, where some people couldn't even tell we weren't using a phone. On the other side of the device, and the optical end of the spectrum, putting a camera on a smartwatch may not seem the best use of space or resources at first, but it has applications other than being a creep in public. As we demonstrated in our Gear vs. Pebble comparison, the app Cam Dictionary uses the Gear's camera to translate text on the fly while keeping your phone in your pocket, which could be huge for globetrotters. And even if you're just looking to snap a few photos when you're out and about, the Gear's 2-megapixel camera does a passable job at capturing stills. About 10 years ago, when the first camera phones came out, people used to say, well, not a bad photo for a phone. Now we can say, not a bad picture for a watch. And that goes for video as well. The Gear shoots in 720p, and the output ain't bad. And yes, both formats can be transferred wirelessly to the phone to be shared via the social media app of your choice. Speaking of apps, Samsung has really done a solid job of kickstarting the ecosystem for the gear. Firing up the Samsung App Store reveals a pretty hefty helping of titles ready to load onto the watch, miniaturized versions of everything from big names like Evernote and Snapchat to lesser known titles like the aforementioned Cam Dictionary. These pared down apps don't all give you the kind of functionality you're used to, but for now, they serve their purpose of extending their parent title's experience to your wrist. And the net effect of all these apps sitting there waiting for you after you unbox the gear is twofold. One, it multiplies the fun of your new toy exponentially, knowing you can augment it with a lot of new features. And two, 
it reassures you that you've bought into a product with a future, something whose functionality will grow rather than stagnate over time. And even with rumors of the Galaxy Gear 2 already starting to simmer in this crazy accelerated tech world of ours, we believe this first Samsung product of its class will enjoy a fairly long usable life, especially once its price drops to a level that'll attract more than just early adopters and gadget lovers like us. If you're looking for a different perspective on this device, hop on over to our companion video, Five Awful Things About the Samsung Galaxy Gear. And if you have a gear of your own, feel free to let us know what your experience has been like. Drop a comment down below. Head on over to our comparison video to see the Galaxy Gear compared against the Pebble smartwatch that is also available for you. But before you go anywhere, please toss us a like if you enjoyed the video and stick around for much more from Pocket Now. Follow us on social media so you don't miss any of that. But until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon.